It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, I'm Sam LaSant. Folks, today the show that you're going to see is really, really interesting. How about if I told you that there was a rosary that actually grew flowers? That's right, a rosary that actually grew flowers. My guest today is Jeannie Poslowski, and she wrote the book, The Rosary That Grew Flowers. It's an interesting story uh, for those of you who believe, and for those of you who do not believe, it'd be interesting for you to listen to this particular show. Uh, I'm very pleased that Jeannie called me and asked if she could get some publicity on the show, and hopefully um, you'll find it very interesting. Jeannie, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Sam. Uh, appreciate you calling. You know, I, I look for, you know, now that political season's gone, uh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, look for people, uh, we have a number of people who wrote books that are coming on the show. Mm -hmm. um, but the rosary that grew flowers, let's go back to the preliminary story. But before I do that, folks, let me just read the dedication of the book, okay? Um, the book is dedicated to Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Teotokos, which is God-bearer, who, through the rosary, personally revealed herself in spiritual, um, special spiritual gifts to thousands in Fatima, Lourdes, and to many others throughout history, seemingly always urging those pre present to pray the rosary every day. For those of you who are not believers, I would tell you to Google the rosary and the story about the rosary and you'll find it very interesting in how powerful the rosary really is. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I just want to let you know that. Now, the Cusco family, am I saying that right, Jeannie? Yes. The Cusco family and thousands of pilgrims in 1928 were witnesses to yet another miraculous event. We continue to go to Jesus through Mary, through her revelations and loving support again in 2013 and 17 and beyond. To God goes all praise and glory. This is the dedication that Jeannie uh, wrote in the book. Okay, so let's go back to the story of this particular book. Well, the book was a brochure in the beginning. It was supposed to be a brochure. Uh, what happened was, back in December of 2013, there was a story about the rosary that bloomed flowers at a wake in Lansford in 1928. And to my surprise, it, was, it happened to a parishioner that was at my church. I, I belonged to St. John's Byzantine Church. And I didn't belong to the church at that time. I had just kind of moved back up here for, I was staying up here for a while. Uh, my mom had died and I was up in the area. And uh, I saw the picture and I saw the picture of Monsignor Marchak. And I thought, my gosh, this happened. If this happened, I wonder if my Aunt Mary knows about it, because my Aunt Mary, at the time, she just died last year at 99 years old, but uh, she would have been 95. At, she was 95 when the story broke, so I called her right away. I called her, and I said, Aunt Mary, did you see the story in the paper tonight? She said, yes, and when I saw Monsignor, she said, I thought, oh, this is important. I really have to read the whole thing right away, and I said, well, have you read it? She said, yes. I said, well, did you see this rosary? Do you know anything about it? She said, um, no, actually, I just asked her, what do you know about it? Did you, did you know about it? She said, I not only knew about it, I saw it. That was the first time in my whole life I ever heard her say those words. Mm -hmm. We never had that story told to us. My Bob and Didi, my grandparents, had taken them as children up to see this rosary. And... Uh, it, it all started to kind of snowball from there, the whole story. So um, I called the priest who I had, Father uh, Vaza Chapelsky, he's our, um, he's our pastor there. And I was acquainted with him even before I joined the church. And I called Father and I said, Father, my aunt saw those rosaries. And uh, he said, oh my goodness. He said, well, can we interview her? I said, sure. I said, I'll make arrangements. I'll let you know. So that's what we did. I took my computer over and we recorded her testimony, basically. And um, she described that the rosaries themselves grew little stems and there were little flowers. And when you looked inside the flowers, 
they were lilies and roses. You could actually see what looked like little seeds and the little stamens and pistils and the little parts of the flower that you see when you look inside of, when a, when, a, when a flower opens, you see all these little things inside. That's what was inside these tiny little flowers that grew out of these rosaries. And where she had seen them was in church. And uh, what happened was, the, the course of the story was that Michael Cusco, now Michael, <clears throat> this is the story of Michael Cusco, right? Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, f for the sake of our, our viewers, okay, we're, we're talking about the Rosie Grew flowers. Now, let's go back as to how this started. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, well, Michael Cusco, was a, he was a young miner, and he lived in Lansford with his parents, and he got injured at work. And what happened was he broke his back. The next five years he spent in Colda Hospital, because of this broken back. I can't imagine anybody spending five years in a hospital today for anything. Like three days is the most you spend in the hospital for most things. Anyway, um, over the course of that time, uh, he kept, he was very faithful. He was very devout. He prayed the rosary every day. He and his parents, they all prayed the rosary daily. And that was just a, a routine thing for them that they prayed. And um, he had his rosaries in the hospital with him, and his mother had hers. And most of the accounts, the, the book has over 50 articles in it that come from all over the world about the story that happened. And Michael took sick after five years. And it was a very, it was a bladder infection, according to the certificate that's in there, the death certificate. And, um, but he, he wouldn't have died today because they could have given him antibiotics. Of course, at the time, they couldn't do that. So he got really very gravely ill and he died. But when he started to get, take very ill, his mother swapped rosaries with him and she gave him his. And she had never had those rosaries anywhere except with herself from young, from being young on through her whole life. But she gave them to him and said, you should pray with my rosaries and then I'll take yours and I'll pray with yours. And they prayed daily to the Blessed Mother. They also prayed, they had great devotion to St. Teresa, the little flower. And the entire time Michael was sick, his mother prayed every day that he would recover. And of course she knew that he wouldn't by this point. And um, so she gave him these rosaries. Well, Michael died and uh, they brought him back home after he died for the wake. And they got his body ready, the uh, funeral director had his body ready, and he took the rosaries that Michael had had when he died, put them into his hands, and they, the, the, the account that um, was, to me, the most accurate was from the Rusin paper, Merikansky Ruski. It was uh, printed by the Greek Catholic Union and it communicated worldwide news really for everyone in this country in their own language. And um, that account talks about how they put the flowers in his hand, or the, um, the rosaries in his hands, and it just seemed as if it was moments went by and they started to bloom flowers. They started to bloom. Let me, let me just read uh, what she's talking about. This is from the book. The Ruskin newspaper also provided details and a description about the rosary beads. No other newspaper had reported. The beads were dark in color, oval, and hung on a gold chain, which entered with a silver cross on which you can see Jesus Christ. You can definitely see for certain that these oval beads changed and they are looking like small flowers, like one small lily or rose. They stayed hung on the gold chain. One side of the rosary, the beads were small blooms, and the other side had bigger blooms. The flowers that were fully bloomed turned to the side, and you could see inside the middle of the bloom. Folks, I'm talking to Jeannie Poslowski. She wrote the book, The Rosary That Grew Flowers. And as I said in the beginning of the show, if you uh, look up rosary, you'll find a very interesting story how the rosary started. Buy flowers. 
And that's how the Rosary Bead started. You can get the book, call Gene. The website we're going to put on the screen for you, but it's 570-668-2024. The book is for two people, two sets of people, the believers and the non-believers. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Lasan Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, you can watch all of our locally produced neighborhood shows on SSPTV.com. Download the app, SSPTV, search SSPTV. All of the shows are here. And there are many shows on here that are people that live all over the world, um, want to know what's going on in, in, in their areas that they grew up. They just go to the app and it's, they're like being home. YouTube, if you don't have, have cable, which you should, many people... Uh, do not have cable. I encourage them to get cable. But however, if you download YouTube, search SSP TV, and you can watch all of our shows, and they're translated in Spanish as well. My guest today is Jeannie Pozlowski. She's an author. She wrote the book, The Rosary That Grew Flowers, a story about this gentleman, Mike Cusco, uh, who was injured in a mine, um, coal mining accident, stayed in the hospital five years. His mother gave her her rosaries, they prayed the rosary every day. I highly recommend that everyone pray the rosary every day. But uh, when they took Mike and they had him in the house, at that time they had um, the bodies, the funeral homes would take the bodies to the home. Okay, so he was in the home and it says here, <clears throat> now we talked about the, how the flowers were on each bead. Mm -hmm. However, um, when, when they laid him out at noon on July 11th, mm -hmm. okay, in the evening at 9 o'clock, there were visible that five beads opened right. in the form of lilies. So this progressed, then, right? Yes, it did. Uh, Throughout, over the three days <clears throat> of the wake, uh, it went from five beads. The next day, I think there were 12 beads. But it ended up with 23 beads. And it only stopped blooming when they removed the flowers from, or the rosaries from his hand. But they were blooming continuously. And the wake itself, I don't know that the wake was continuous, but it went well into the night, well early in the next morning. There were just thousands, tens of thousands of people in Lansford at the time. It says thousands and thousands were coming through the house in the memory, okay, Michael. Now, your, your grandmother? My so, grandmother and my grandfather. They went, they went here and they saw the beads? They didn't see the beads at the wake. They saw the beads at our church. Okay. Because what happened was, um, because of all of this that was happening, uh, of course, Monsignor, I'm sure that he got a hold of, uh, he uh, got a hold of the bishop, uh, and who was out in Pittsburgh at the time, and Bishop Takach, and he gave him permission to keep the rosaries. So the family gave him the rosaries for investigation purposes. And so once he received the rosaries, from the family, he put them in a glass box, and they were on what's called the tetrapod, which is a small table in front of the main altar out in the aisle of the church. And anybody who's been in a Byzantine or Eastern church or Orthodox church will see the tetrapod. Normally what is on there is an icon to whatever saint is the feast of that time of day, or you know, of that day, or of that week, or whatever. But uh, at that point, he removed that icon and put those, those beads there. And that's where my Aunt Mary saw them with her parents. And this, this, she told me that the, the line was enormous coming down the steps of the church, down the street. So you actually had to get in line down the street to walk up, to go in. And all they did was just potentially, basically, you looked at them and you walked by. Anybody who goes to view a reliquy, um, has to do the same thing. You just have to wait in line and just, you slowly go by, but you get a good look at whatever it is. It also states here that the beads were actually opening while people were going very slowly. So it wasn't a matter they went, they were there. Yes. Okay, they actually saw the flowers being grown. Um, as they stood there. As they stood there. Yes, yes, yes. And over the course of the three years of investigating this story, I, I learned of two other eyewitnesses besides my Aunt Mary who saw those rosaries. And one happened to be uh, a woman who, she's in Lansford, she's uh, Amory Williams of Lansford, and she is a, 
a relative to John and uh, Mamie Cusco, who were like Michael's oldest brother was John. And John and Mamie had the rosaries in a frame in their home, which I didn't know. And um, Anne Marie knew this because Anne Marie, they would go there every Sunday after church. You know how you go somewhere after sure. church. And uh, as a child, she'd go in and, and of course she'd see the rosaries there in a frame and she could see the flowers. And she knew the story and she knew about them. And then it seemed as if throughout, she saw them in church, then she saw them again back in the home, but then she didn't see them anymore. So she really didn't know what happened to them. And uh, as, as I was sort of finishing this book, because it, it just, it evolved and it grew and it grew and it grew yeah, into I, this book. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, um, I encountered, I met through a radio show, uh, Coleridge Connections on WLSH. He was talking about paranormal events on Halloween and uh, Mark Merrick. And the reason he was talking about it was this was, uh, this was an event that was cited in a book, and I'm not sure what the name of the book was. I never really got that. It was about paranormal events. And there's a woman, Marie Valentini, who lives in Lansford. And she, was, she has been praying and helping me to try to find people who knew about the rosary. She's not old enough to have seen them or witnessed, but she knew the people who lived in the area and so on, and she knew the Cusco family. So anyway, she called me this Saturday morning, which was a Halloween, and said, quick, put on the radio. So I quick and ran and put on the radio, and here he is talking about these paranormal events. And so I called right in because this is not a paranormal event. This is a religious event. Mm -hmm. And on a day like Halloween, which was supposed to, it's all Hallow's Eve, which is supposed to commemorate death and the saints sure. and the souls. It's a Catholic event. It, it actually came from a Catholic event. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, so, but in the meantime, we turned it into this whole demonic thing, which is horrible. Mm -hmm. um, the, the tenure of the show, it was amazing because when I called, I said, Mark, uh, uh, those rosaries, that was for real. That was, people saw them, and I corrected some of the things that were in the story that he had talked about. He said, how do you know this? I said, because I'm writing a book about it and I'm researching, and I have eyewitnesses. He said, oh my gosh. So of course, everybody was all excited about it, mm -hmm. and the show turned on a dime mm -hmm. to talk about not just that, but other religious events that mm -hmm. people had seen. The beads, uh, folks, uh, they were made of dark wood, Supposedly from a St. John's tree grown on the premises at the Vatican in Rome, they were strung on a silver chain with a silver crucifix. It's interesting because we talked about, and we're going to talk a little bit when we come back to the break, the, the reason for the book and throughout time where the Blessed Mother made various appearances mm -hmm. and always talked about pray the rosary, Absolutely. how very powerful that is. Mm -hmm. And I always get sometimes, um, and People are busy, but people say to me, well, I don't have the time to pray the rosary. Well, when you get in your car in the morning and you drive to work, instead of listening to all the crap that's on, t on the radio stuff, okay, all the nonsense, mm -hmm. you could say your rosary, Absolutely. okay, and pray the rosary, and, and that is, is very, if Catholic or Protestant, it's, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting story. Folks, I'm talking to Jeannie Pozlowski, um, true story. Uh, and you can get the book you want to call her or the website's on the screen, 570-668-2024. We'll come back, talk a little bit more about this miracle. But well, what does it mean? What does it mean? What are, what are we being told? I want you just to think about something, folks. I'm not lecturing anybody here. What's happening in our country in the last maybe 10 years? The disasters, the hurricanes, the fires. Well. Non-believers say it's science. I think it's something else. We'll come back, we'll talk a little bit about that. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. You're watching The Sam LaSan Show. My guest is Jean, Jeannie Pozlowski, the author of The Rosary That Grew Flowers. Okay, so we're talking about the rosary and different things. Before I went to break, we talked about <clears throat> people um, who are practicing their religion and praying the rosary 
and we look at what's going on in our country for the last number of years, Jeannie, and you see the tornadoes, the weather forecast, and the fires, et cetera, et cetera. And you just wonder, you know, uh, if, if, if God's trying to tell us something, okay? Uh, but for the non-believers, it's scientific, and it's this, and it's all that. So I don't know how many times, you know, he's going to have to send messages out there, let people understand. But this, the, the book, okay, you said it was inspired by this gentleman, Bob Shear, right? Correct. Let's talk about Bob. Bob Shear is a, he's a fine gentleman. He lives in uh, St. Clair, and um, he worked, he was working as a volunteer for the Schuylkill County Historical Society, as well as for um, St. Clair. And uh, in going through old articles, they go through microfiche and copy things off that would be interesting, or they find other information on them. Well, one day he came upon this story about this rosary that grew flowers, and it was in the Pottsville Republican, I think. And he made a copy of it, put it aside. Then he called a friend of his who worked at the Standard and Times in Philadelphia, the archdiocese down there, thinking that's where they belonged and so on. He said, go back to this date, see if you have any articles in this front page, or front, you know, front page of that paper, there it was, Rosary Blooms. Wow. And so it was very well covered by both secular and religious press at the time in 1928. And the, um, the story, when he read it, he thought, I have to investigate this. Yeah. So he put it aside. He said he found this story around 2003. Mm -hmm. So it took quite a while till he actually mm -hmm. came back to it. Yeah. He said, I don't know why. I just like, forgot about the folder or you got on to other things. You know how it is. So he said, one day I pulled it out and I thought, oh, I have to find out about this. So he calls Bill Harleman, who is in charge of the Historical Society over in Lansford. And he says, Bill, what do you know about this uh, rosary that grew flowers? Whatever happened to it? Do you have it there or what happened? He said, I don't know anything about it. He mm. said, what do you mean you don't know anything? So he said, I have these articles and they were worldwide and mm. this and that. He said, oh, I don't know. Mm. So he then contacted the local newspaper, which then they got a hold of Don Serfus, who writes a lot of features. He's retired now, but he still mm. does features for the Times News down mm. in Tamaqua and for the Jim Thorpe Leighton area. And um, he investigated, and what he found was indeed this did happen. This did occur. It was reported by the news and so on. And that's what spurned the newspaper article that we read. And so to attest to that, we have your um, grandmother, right? Mary, uh, was she? That's your my aunt. Your aunt, the 95-year-old mm -hmm. Cold Day resident. We'll put her picture. Mary Poslowski uh, Dernberger, mm -hmm. right? And, and she actually saw the rosary in display in the church yes. in 1928. Now That's we go right. to this uh, other um, lady, um, and so this is who are we looking at here? That's Anne Marie Williams. Anne Marie Williams. Okay, she um, she saw them. She's the relative to uh, John and Mamie Cusco, okay. who had them in their house. Uh, so she she saw them at the house exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have another person here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. That's all in a book, folks. You got to get the book. It's fantastic. Um, Next page. You got your hand on okay. it right there. All right. And this is who is this? That's Helen Trimmel. Helen Trimmel. Mm -hmm. And she saw the. Uh, she saw them at the wake. At the wake. At the wake. Right. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And how I discovered Helen, because I didn't know she was out there or existed, was after I had been on the radio uh, talking about it, Mark said to me, oh, can you hold on for a couple minutes until I close the show? I said, sure. So he came back on and he said to me, off, 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 off air, I know somebody who saw these rosaries. Yeah. I said, you did? He said, yes. I, I thought, oh my goodness. So he gave, he said, let me make sure with her it's all right. You can come and see her and so on, talk to her. I said, fine. Well, I went to interview her and we had a lovely interview. And she basically told me without knowing what my Aunt Mary or Anne Marie had told me, the exact description of all three of those matched about what those rosaries looked like every Three, all of those stories matched, and they all matched the Greek Catholic Union newspaper. And we talk about, you know, the fact that, you know, messages are being sent. Yes. Um, now, St. Lucia, uh, who was one of the people that actually saw the Blessed Mother at Fatima, mm -hmm. uh, and she said, Our Lady of the Rosary is reminding us of her promises at Fatima. Mm -hmm. St. Lucia tells us, this is what the Blessed Mother said, okay? There is no problem, I tell you. 
no matter how difficult it is, mm -hmm. that we cannot solve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary, okay? Uh, and again, it's not a matter of lecturing anyone, uh, Gene. I, it's, it's, it, it, I always say there's things happen for a reason, yes, okay? Do. So this book was inspired, okay, by the Holy Spirit to you, mm -hmm. and went out and got all this information on uh, the, the Rosary, how powerful it is. You don't have time, you have time, folks. You drive to work, you drive home, you can always say the rosary. Mm -hmm. The rosary that grew flowers. Uh, if you want the book, phone number is on the screen, 570-668-2024, and there's the website. Jeannie, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. And thank you for following me. Appreciate it very much. Keep praying your rosary, and I will too. Every day, every day. We'll see you next time.